Hey guys, so we're going to continue on with the thread of the most autistic 40k tabletop moments and I know a lot of you are asking and yes, tomorrow we are going to be putting out the Fresh Prince of 40k. We're going to be continuing on with it. I know you guys have been asking. I know you're really wanting it. We're we're going to do it today but time is of the essence. So hang tight and it'll be in tomorrow. tomorrow. Don't worry, keep keep, uh, your notifications on. Watch this space. let's, Let's just get into this, will we? I still remember when an Eldar player named Ben tattled the Games Workshop corporate at Games Workshop Voorhees, New Jersey. Ben got the red shirt fired and the location closed down. The red shirt would use his employee discount to buy prize support for small events and use his discount on tons of products. It was against guidelines and man did Ben just have to whine and email corporate after he had some argument with the red shirt over something I don't even remember. This is after the location recently lost a few employees and was now a one-man store. They had him escorted out of the store and the new temporary manager genuinely never played a single Games Workshop game. He was there just for the last few months at Handicapped Hours as the old red shirt launched another store in the same town that saw success with War Machine and other games for a few years. So, thanks Ben. Why would you do that? Why, I know. Why, why, why would you get a Why would out? you be that salty? I know, like that's that's extreme levels of salt. You know what that is? Wow. That's you'll never have a friend. Yeah, oh sweet. That's, that's, that's uh, just that's, like you you will you are child, destined man. destined to die alone if yeah. that's what the way you're getting on. Yeah, that's actually just sad to be honest. Yeah. Seeing someone like a good ass person behave like that. Oh, I don't have words. We're off to a good start though. <laughs> Play a game with some friends. Me and my friends are playing a 2,500 point army. My dark angels and his blood angels against 1,000 points of our other friends' orcs. Blood angels player ends up in melee, declares an attack against a whole squad of death copters, starts rolling dice. Other player says he gets to decide where the wounds go since the other player phrased it as into the whole squad. For some reason this takes off and a 10 minute argument breaks out with me in the middle, trying to calm everyone down so that we can get back to playing the game. Blood Angel starts taking his models off the table. Orc player is yelling and looking through the rulebook. Both of them are trying to get me on their side. I just want the melee phase to be done so I can get back to blaming shit with my plasma. The whole thing lasted about 20 minutes of yelling back and forth about specific wordings of rules before the Blood Angel player finally put his models back down and we finished off the game. It was super weird and I felt bad about eventually winning the game. I guess the big argument sort of soured the victory for me. Both super fun guys to play with. This is the first time this happened which is why it was such a shock. I'd like to point out that I'm relatively new to modern Warhammer. The last time I played was back in early 6th edition, so I have no fucking clue who was in the right. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck that was about, to be honest with you. I know you can declare, like, you know, who attacks who in, like, later. I think it started in 8th edition, but I never really played much at 8th edition. Yeah. To be honest with you, like, they're both fucking melee heavy (laughs) armies. They're both going to be like, no, No! (laughs) I get this, because I've get the i got the melee army. The God Angels are a great melee army, or a great melee army. I, I, you know, you can see where the just Yeah, you know, but I, like, I think yeah. everyone's been around and it's like, no, the wording is like this. I need the ultimate advantage. The, the fucking the fella in the corner, like licking his fingers, going through the paper, going, "I will get to the part in the book to tell you where you're wrong." Yeah, no, like I, I don't know. I'm not a big little scorer. Be honest with you, I just kind of go with it. And someone says, "No, you're doing it wrong." I'm like. Oh, all right, right. okay. Unless they're, unless they're kind of being a dick about it, then it's like, yeah, and kill, right, yeah unless yourself. they're fully bullshitting. Yeah, fully bullshitting. Fully bullshitting. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know that. This next one is in reply to somebody who asked, is just this all spurging out a US thing? Yeah. Because they have I, never seen it. I've, I've never... I've never came across I've never came bad. across it. I've, I've came across, like, you know, people arguing. Awkward. No, awkward. I've came across awkward, awkward. and arguing, but yeah. never people like... like I've never seen a, a table flipper. No. I've never seen a table flipper. I've, I've also never... never witnessed, like, people coming in, like, stealing oh, no, your I've shit. Ne- I've never came across that either. Or, like, rubbing dice and balls and sucking. <laughs> I've ne- never... Never came across but, any of this stuff. Yeah, but, but this guy is in reply to him saying, As an ex-red shirt in Australia, I can tell you, yes, we have our share of weirdos. Be me. Haven't played in ages. Seven plus months. Have a day off when friendly local game store has 40k games night. 
excited, dress nicely, always shower beforehand. Take that as a fucking note, guys. Yeah, please. Personal rule is to always go into a game store for pickup games, like going to an interview or a date. Well, maybe not that far, but like, not at that least far, but fucking like, shower. Be, like, be clean. Be clean, shower yourself, and try not to like spurt out in front of people. Yeah. Unless they know you, then it's not too bad. <laughs> Even then. Even then, yeah. Brand new, fully painted, converted, Thousand Sun Army ready to go. This was way before the Thousand Sun release. Show up. Everything looking good. Making friends, getting laughs, ask around for a game after anyone has finished their game. Lots of enthusiasm. They would love to. Actually, I'm <laughs> free now for a game. No, please, no. Oh, please, no. <laughs> okay, here's this guy, let's see. The smell hits me before I see him. Turn around and see a little hobgoblin of a man-child holding a shoebox of badly half-painted orcs. I think he used house paint. <laughs> I was about to give polite refusal when his dad barges over and introduces himself and his son. Feelbad.exe Oh. He was in the same boat as me. Hadn't played in ages, despite being a regular. Agreed a game, a smaller game than I had planned to get it over with as quickly as possible. Quickly write a list to go easy on him. Give him an easy win so he can feel good about himself. If I'm going to be charitable, I may as well go all in. Start deploying. Drops 20 boys and 2 trucks and a war boss and 3 bikes. What? JPEG? <laughs> Doesn't even come close to how many points we are playing. Ask about it. He has given his work every single upgrade to make up the points we agreed to. Realise I'm going to slaughter him. Start playing. Try to shoot at non-logical targets. Try to forget to move or shoot units. Give advice on best moves for his orcs. Every time he loses a unit, I can see tears from his eyes. Oh god. Still beat him senseless. For god's sake, my cultists beat his armoured orcs in close combat. That's bad. He breaks down crying. He is packing away his orcs so hard bits are flying off. His father is trying to console him. I reach out to shake his hand to say it was a good game. He sticks out his flipper and weakly shakes back his flipper. <laughs> he shakes out his flipper. <laughs> then proceeds to storm out of the store. Say goodbye to my new friends at the other tables. Gets looks of disgust as I think I've taken advantage <laughs> of a mentally handicapped man-child for an easy win. <laughs> Leaves. Oh, oh my god. I, no, well, that's not the worst. That's just, like, the guy's just a bit of a spur, you know. I, I, you know, you always feel bad. Like, okay. you know... Don't. I feel really bad. I feel bad for his dad coming as well. It's like, no, it's okay, son. I'll help you. You know what I mean? Oh, that's. Don't. I actually just feel bad about that one, to be honest with you. I don't even want to laugh yeah. at that, you know? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards, and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. <laughs> and honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us, and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below, and just just look at this lizard lady with titties. <laughs> she got big titties. Look at the titties! <laughs> I knew a guy in high school, a skaven and toy player. I can see where this is going. With Skiven and Toy. <laughs> yeah. Aside from having an absolutely atrociously painted army, he would literally dip the model in a oh, paint pot. I, I heard about that. People used to do that what? in the 90s. I remember that. He would that, dip that, the model in a yeah, paint it was pot. Dip in. It was actually like a thing. And I'm do even... some weird, whiny, Cartman esque begging and pleading when a unit got killed. Oh, no, guys. No, please. <laughs> Stop it, guys. <laughs> it's not cool. <laughs> I don't, is that more Mr. Garrison? I don't know. That's Cartman? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That's like such a Bimmer thing to do. I, I know? know it is. Like, know. Bimmer still think Cartman's, like, no, Cartman's no. voice is hilarious. No, you know one of the ultimate B Bimmer things to parody? Monty Python and fucking Borat. Oh, my God. Borat, oh, yes. Borat was like a thing for like three yes. years. <laughs> oh, my God. I have, like, I have people I know, like, in their mid 30s. I still suffer from it. I, I, like, I don't okay, mind that much with Monty Python because Monty Python is based in Red Pill. But the problem with the old party in Monty Python is it's it never makes funny. it funny. It's never it funny. It doesn't make it funny. <laughs> it's never funny no. whenever they're copying it. No. It just doesn't work. 
So he done some weird whiny Cartman ass begging and pleading when a eunuch got killed. He also did weird stuff off the table. He used to have a book of grudges. He would write down the names of all the people that wronged him and what they had done. What? He had to write a story about the plague in medieval Norfolk for history homework. He wrote about the Skaven invading Bretonia instead of the horned rat eating a duke's head. The history teacher was confused <laughs> as fuck. I have no words. Look, I'll give him credit for the book of grudges. At least he's keeping it in universe, at least. But, like... Oh, doing that for a head. Oh, no. That's cringe. That's weird. I'm sorry, mate. You pushed cringe. <laughs> you pushed that, that, cringe, bro. You pushed cringe, bro. That's not even funny. Two men in their 40s almost getting into a fist fight over a game. This was about eight years ago, so I remember very little about the game itself. One guy was playing ultramarines, the other orcs. The orc player was able to escalate an argument over a rule into challenging the other guy to step outside to settle the matter. Did he just challenge him to move the glass? Step up, bro. (laughs) (laughs) The rest of the club quickly stepped in to de-escalate it and nothing further came of it. I no longer remember the argument itself, merely the shock of watching two fully grown men with families and careers almost go to blow over a casual match. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's... I, I, I've never came across that, to be honest with you. I've, I, I've, I've, yeah, there's been people in That's it. embarrassing, yeah, that though. Is embarrassing. Yeah, you... Being a man. Don't, don't, be getting, don't get stuff like that get under your skin no, so much. Not really. over a fucking tabletop game. You no, know, don't, don't get yourself fouled up, though. Please Fuck don't. me. Please don't. Playing a friendly game with my best friend. 8th edition just launched, we're trying it out. Biggest rules mistake we both make is forgetting cover saves in a central structure. It was benefiting me more than him, so I dropped a couple of models. Whoops, Xeno Plague. And we rule it as just a save once you're in. Fuck it, we'll just have fun and breaking off rust. Guy comes up and starts rules lawyering my friend, then starts going on me with, you can't do that. Use dude, it's a game between me and my best friend. Guy doesn't get it. Says he can arbitrate. Tell him we don't need it. He insists he arbitrates so I don't cheat. I was using like a mixed Primaris army and he said it was unfair I was fighting Necrons. My army was like a poor hammer shit list. We both have to tell the guy flat out that he wasn't welcomed in this game and to fuck off back to wherever corner he came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how you deal with it. Yeah. Please, please guys, deal with- maybe don't be so good. But fucking deal with the problem sometimes, you know? <laughs> Guy later came up to my friend and insisted that he was right and that I'm an asshole. The experience was so weird we never went to that gaming store again. I think I was the bad guy here. Sixth edition had recently came out. Chilling at the shop. Orc Players offers a game. Orc Player has every model named on its base. Has a bunch of old second edition orcs and full 30 mob orcs. Spent about 10 minutes talking about the history of his orcs and the many campaigns he had taken them to. I listened and engaged. I'm not rude. Guy has to be fielding almost 250 plus orcs in her 1,500 point game. I'm sorry, but look, that's how you do it. Right? <laughs> you're playing orcs, you're playing orcs for one reason only. You want to have a lot of models. And you want to wag. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. I, don't, I, like, I, I really don't... I don't really feel bad. Like if he wants to make an entire army of just boys, like, like leave him to it, you know. And you can just, like he's he's really into it, you know. He's, yeah. You know he's getting all over on the bases. He's really into his army. He really enjoys it. I can't really. Yeah. I can't like call him out for that, can you? I had a basic list because I didn't know what worked yet. A commander, some real rifle broadsides, a hammerhead, a bunch of fire warriors, and devil fish. This is like reading Chinese to me. Like, you can't cross the tie. A right? new Riptide and a new Razor Shark. Win initiative. Look for targets. See a big mech in back. That big mech is kind of far back. Which squad is he attached to? I asked. Oh, he's not. The guy replies. He's just there, out in the open? Yeah. Pause a moment. Snipe the big mech with my commander's plasma. He was relying on one big mech's five plus to walk his horde up. Start dropping templates. Guy concedes, somewhat dejected. We both know the outcome, he says. Never saw such disappointment in a game since. Can't help but feel it was my fault. Should have held back, I guess, but I was excited to try out the Riptide. Riptides are really powerful, but look... It's a tie player. You know he's you know he's got no soul anyway. <laughs> you know he's you know he's he's, he's just like you know if he's a tie player, he, he's one of two things: he's a power gamer and he's a communist. And he can't <laughs> trust either. Yeah. Simple as, right? 
I'm fairly new to the tabletop, but I've read 40k books since the early 2000s. Last year finally got into the game as a friend who worked at the games workstore gave me about 1000 points of Space Marines. I enjoyed the Hell's Reach book so I naturally went with Templars. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. He books a table at the store he used to work at so I can learn to play and I take my 1k army of which maybe two thirds are just battle ready painted and one third I have painted in a way I now know is very basic but I was happy with it as a newbie. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy that you know, that's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I was never, I, it took me a long time before I was happy with my yeah. painting. Staff at the GW store are great. Show me around and ask me questions, etc. They pick up, I know my lore, even if I only know basics of the game. There's other games finishing up and the staff introduce us to the players. They are regulars who know my friend and invite us to watch their games, resolve and apologies. They have gone into extra time. It's Imperial Fists versus Tyranids. I compliment each army on its painting. Bids were a cool neon colour scheme. I asked my friend and staff a few quiet questions about why the player just did X. Is that model able to do Y? Etc. Etc. They finish and clear the map and we got out our army. My friend plays Space Wolves. Eh, disgusting! And has a great 1500 point army ready. He used to paint the display pieces and has a real knack so they look great. My army looks like shit, but everyone's really nice. They compliment me. Say how it's a fun army to learn to paint. Two thin coats. Be as creative as you like. Tells me how to make a wet palette, etc. I only have 1k, and instead of my friend cutting 500 out of their army, the Games Workshop staff let me use some of their models. I think an Imperial Fist Land Raider and a squad of extra intercessors. For lore purposes, we treated the whole thing as Templaros. Just without the paint scheme. It was before the Faith and Fury stuff anyway. So far I've had an amazing time and everyone has been wonderful. A few people came into the store. A dad with a son who wanted to spend some birthday money. A quiet did and he bought some paint. Then he came. Immediately everyone's mood changed. The embodiment of everything I feared finding in the shop entered. A fat guy. Late twenties. Receding hairline which was slicked back in a greasy tail. He had two bags with him. A Tesco's carrier bag and one of those fancy foam transport bags for your army. Everyone lost their enthusiasm. The guy who I later learned was called James. Oh, for fuck's sake, come on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, the guy who I later learned was called James looked around a bit and then made his way to us. Even though he could see we were in the middle of a session, he just stands there and says if to no one in particular, that he needs the table. Hey, fuck off. Go away. <laughs> yes, no. Fuck off, James, would you? <laughs> Alright, okay. My friend looks pissed and is about to say something rude, I think, but then the Games Workshop staff, who is teaching us 8th edition, calmly and very diplomatically, explain that the table is booked out and in use. He can use the Age of Sigmar table next to us, though. James mutters under his breath and I got the impression this was not the first time this had happened. So James just stands there and watches us creepily with his bags in his hand. I find this awkward and try to break the tension by saying, Don't worry, with how bad I am at this game, I'll probably have lost by the time your opponent gets here. This did not break the tension. Although my friend held in a snort of laughter and the Games Workshop guy looked embarrassed, I could tell I was missing something. James just stared at me and said, If you're bad, why are you here? What? I looked <laughs> like, fuck, fuck off. off. Everyone's got to learn at some I know, point. Exactly. You can't just imagine, you just, can't like, just expect some I, people I, to I, rock I, up I, and know everything. I, I, I really despise that level of snob. Like, I know. And it's, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I have come across it once or twice before, and I, oh, I can't stand Yeah, I like know that. who the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. I looked at the Games Workshop guy who had a tired look that said, please don't escalate this. So I just shrugged and said, well, someone has got to give my friend something to shit at. That was the point of no return. James starts talking, for 10 minutes straight, about how Space Wolves and Templars are not shooting factions, our armies are not competitive, our armies are poorly painted, he would never play with such inferior armies, etc, etc, etc. We just blank him. The Games Workshop staff only responds when asked a direct question. After 10 minutes, James goes quiet, then lets out a massive, OTT, exaggerated sigh. 
honestly, like the games workshop staff need to go a fucking backboard and just tell them to fuck, fuck off. off. Like honestly, <laughs> I, I know I know he play buys a lot of models and all that jazz, but sometimes he's living It's just the not worth it, like, and it, he's no. making people. He's I, sending people away. Yeah, I, th- I think he would send people away. I, I don't think I would want to. Oh, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I send couldn't. Them to them because then I couldn't hold my mic. Yeah, like I don't mind people being awkward or not having. You know what I mean? Like, just don't be fucking rude. rude. Yeah, I think that's that's not like you're not really asking much. Are and you? the thing is, this boy's British. He's got a Tesco bag. I know. Don't be rude. <laughs> he finally moves to the Age of Sigmar table and unloads his bags. The army carrier bag has a lot of foam sheets containing his army. The Tesco bag contains a two litre bottle of <laughs> Iron Brew and a big sharing bag of Doritos. He res- Iron Brew is stank. Iron Brew is rotten. Rotten. Anyone that likes Iron Brew needs to sort themselves. I, I, I'm judging more on, on this, the Iron Brew than anything. <laughs> he proceeds to eat a handful of this orange dusky snack and drinks straight from the bottle. He wipes his hand barely on his shirt. Which is of some band I don't remember. I thought you were going to fucking mention something about Doritos for me. Nah, you love your Doritos. I love my dates. Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> we then kind of stop our game and watch him unpack his army. It's a huge Thai army. How did he spell it Thai? Why like did he? It looks like Tot. I know. It's a huge Thai army. I don't know the Thai units, but they all look like Gundams. Ah, uh, they do. We, yeah. we trash that needs to be burned. <laughs> I could tell they were extremely well painted, like better than the game's workshop displays, and most of the stuff I saw on Instagram. Well, okay. But they were filthy. Every model was covered in a thin of not too thin layer of crud. He set up his army and then just stood there and pulled out a Nintendo Switch. What? So is he just waiting? Why? Yeah, he just waits for people to show up then, I think. To see if somebody will play with him. Yeah. That he never gets a game. Yeah, bet Nobody he ever wants to play with him. Like, hard pass on that. Yeah, I would hard pass on him. I he's, ignored him. He's really turns people down as I know. well. Fuck him. I ignored him. And we finished our game with only the occasional look over at James if the whistling sound of his breathing through his nose got too bad. <laughs> we finished, packed up, and I buy some of the contrast paints and lead belcher. Thank everyone and wish them a Merry Christmas. It was mid-December and I don't live locally. As we leave, I say to James, Have a good time. The second we leave, my friend starts laughing. He then tells me, James was a regular when he worked there. Everyone hates James. James disappeared for over nine months. Rumour was his parents found CP on his computer and he got grounded. Dude would have been mid-twenties at the time. James has autism and the store can't ban him for rumours. James... Slash James's parents bought him the army for a professional from a professional painter, oh, so he, so he didn't even paint. paint it. Fuck off, then. He, he claimed don't. he claimed it cost five thousand pounds. I would believe that, yeah. Then the best part: James wasn't waiting for a friend. He would come into the store two to three times a week and just set up his army, hoping someone would just play with him. But no one would, as every player for miles around hated him. This all made me so sad. I have never gone back to that store. Fuck James. Honestly, I almost feel bad for the part we found. I could feel bad for I him. I could if but he wasn't into he CP. Didn't bring it on himself. And he wasn't into CP, apparently. Yeah, he wasn't into that. And he didn't. he didn't bring it on himself and he didn't just get on like a dick. Yeah, I, I, I would really feel bad for a fellow that just shows up. Three, like, I get it. Two to three times a week and just. He's almost begging for people to play with him. Like, I get it. I, I, I understand that people with autism can't read facial expressions yeah. or read the room very well. Like, I get it. I. I, just don't be fucking good to just, people. You know, you know, like, you know, can you just not be good? That's all really anyone asks for, I think, a lot of the time. And he seems know? competent enough that why doesn't, why aren't, why isn't a parent with him? Yeah, he does feel like that sort of fella. Oh, I think, I think the, the synopsis of this video has come down to no one really cares if you're like weird or a not, bit of a spur. Yeah, nobody a honestly cares. But like, just don't see be if rude. You're fucking good. People just aren't going to like you. And you see know, if you like, drink iron brew as well. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's going to like you. <laughs> fucking sort that out. You sort have, that right you out. Pour that shit down the sink right now. It's absolutely All vile. the Scottish people listening are going... <laughs> 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 Fuck off. My iron brew. My iron brew. My iron brew. Thank. And tell me it's not. But look, um, I know you guys have been waiting for the Fresh Prince. It'll be out tomorrow. Don't worry, guys. It's coming very soon. And I just really enjoyed this thread. I, I, I'm really thinking about maybe getting back into 40k a wee bit. Because I haven't played it that long. 
So who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, Google Game Stop is or Game Stories opened up again, so I might. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm so, gonna have a horrible time trying to read them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'll try. <laughs> but like, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Bye.